Andrew, sorry, Andrew, Andrew, what do I say to you? I know an Andrew, I know a Shane that looks just like you. Andrew's looking after a band, and we'll, we'll come back later as that great young trainer, Robbie Smurden, saddles Big Dermy that they think can beat the favourite canny lad in the big one coming up. believe that this horse can lead all the way today and hold off better loosen up and a fast finishing citizen for third and of course the race is chock full of interest with people looking at those contenders that like citizen and terrific that will be having their final melbourne cup preparation but big money on stylish century today to beat the favorite better loosen up and of course the great citizen in third spot and i'm down here with robbie smurden's two derby hopes Big Dermot, who's been back, one of the best back day, Dermy, one of the best best backed horses in the Derby. Big Dermot, right now Melody's got ice packs around his leg, and we'll come back after this race to talk to Robert Smurden, the trainer, as he saddles Big Dermot, the one they've backed to beat, Canny Lad today, and of course Robbie's also got abandoned war in the race. He's being looked over there by Andrew. Sorry, Andrew. Andrew's looking after a band and we'll, we'll come back later as that great young trainer Robbie Smurden saddles Big Dermy that they think can beat the favourite canny lad in the big one coming up. But right now, Dan, let's go back and see if Stylish Century can lead all the way and beat the champ better loosen up. Well, Bobby, you're doing a great job. Thanks a lot. Well, Crackers Keenan might be able to tell us that Crackers Stylish Century is one of the most immaculate looking racehorses I think I've ever seen. I know he looks fantastic, but uh, a horse like that, an anxious type of horse, does he sweat up going to the barrier or does he just look a million bucks? No, he looks a treat. And uh, he just looks like his old man double century who Ron McDonald trained. But uh, I looked at better loose enough. The best weight for age horse in Australia. The interesting runner, I suppose, is Dan is Narbotto, which we haven't seen. And uh, he's a handicap of a big reputation. He's going around in a weight for age. But uh, just looking at the horse flesh here, they are tremendous stars. And uh, I'm just going right round for them. Uh, I can't see anybody beating better loose enough. Probably a stylish century will run the race of his career today because he's a bit unlucky in the, in the Cox Plate. But... Better loosen up. He was beaten in a photo by the champion racehorse in Australia, Better Loosen Up. That's the quality of the Derby runners. It's the classic, the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby, every owner's dream. Let's have a look at the contenders for the 1990 Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. The Derby is Australia's classic three-year-old race. The Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby offers $775,000 in prize money. And the question as to who is the country's best staying three-year-old will be answered today. Will Australia's champion two-year-old from last season, Canny Ladd, dominate the three-year-old races as he did the juvenile events? And it's another golden slipper to Shane Dye. The Victorian Canny Ladd draws away to beat with me. Will Queensland's Magic Million winner St Jude belie his sprinting breeding and win the derby? He finished sixth in last Saturday's Cox Plate. Will Ken Centro take out the big double? Last month, he narrowly won the Caulfield Guineas. Time Zam went to the front with Centro. Centro, Time Zam, Centro. Robert Smurton has never had a derby runner before. This year, he has two. Abandoned War, the Iron Horse, who has been working up the mountains in Ballarat, won the derby trial at Geelong at his last start. Abandoned War in front, the Guida lunging Abandoned War. His stablemate, Big Dermot, an athletic three-year-old who has unlimited potential. The Colin Alderson train, the Guida, was set for the derby after winning a maiden at Bendigo in April. 
Now the gelding has won four of his ten starts and is one of the most promising staying three-year-olds in the land. Bart Cummings is looking for his sixth Victoria Derby winner in what a hit. Or can the filly, Lycra, upstage the Colts? Who will win the 1990 Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby? Well, the Derby. It's going to be a ripper of a race and in about... 20 minutes time we'll find out just two will be rewritten into the record books we'll uh, take a break when we come back we'll build it up for you to the big one the victoria derby in just under 20 minutes Welcome back to Flemington. We've just heard there's the best part of about 40,000 people here today and even the fellows you just saw there wearing their hats in all colours, shapes and sizes of hats too from the toppers to those very fashionable hats the blokes are in today. A few scenes out on the lawn. Everyone has just a special day here on Derby Day. Pretty relaxed and some of the best horse racing you will ever see. And Derby and then you, you'll stay with us uh, right until race time. Well, Candy Lad, uh, I think, has got to be the favourite for the Derby and, and, and should win it... Uh, I would think easily. Okay, all right. There's a, there's a big tip from David Haynes. Dan, let's check the totes, see how they're going. Timmy certainly is one of the shortest price favourites that we've seen in the Victoria Derby for quite a while. And at the moment, he is at about a dollar and a ten cents. The totes coming up now. Dollar five, how's that? He's even shortened up. 785 St. Jude, 770 the Guida, 575 for number eight. What a hit. Abandoned Wars at big odds, 15-15. He'll definitely get the distance, number seven. Lord Rivener a chance over the page. In the Derby, Preset 12-15, given a big chance. Fire Rake 23-10, Big Derm at 3.35, Grooming 13.05, Lycra at $7.20. Dr. Turf, the Derby, what do we do? Well, Dan, we're just standing down here soaking up the atmosphere at the moment because, Docky, it's normally a little bit earlier that we see the Derby, but there's a certain buzz before the best three-year-olds in the land walk into this mountain game. Yeah, there is, Pete, and I think uh, Canny Lad's the reason for the buzz because uh, everybody wants to know, will he stay? because if he does stay, he wins easily for mine. And I, I think, uh, depending on whether he's going to stay or not, is the, is the pace of the race. And uh, so it's all these questions have to be answered, Pete. And I hope he wins, actually, because he's the best uh, three-year-old in the land, and I hope he salutes the judge. Well, those questions will be answered in just over 10 minutes from now. Graham Kelly's in the weighing room, and I suppose the jockeys are just about coming out now dreaming of the big money, Graham. Yes, Peter, the bell has just rung behind me with the uh, jockeys about to come out for the Victoria Derby. I'm one of those that think Kenny Ladd will stay. He's certainly not bred on staying lines, being by Fletching Lee out of a lunchtime mare. But we remember Kingston Town. He was a great horse. He was just beaten in the Melbourne Cup 3,200 metres. It's generally accepted to be easier for three-year-olds to run over a distance. So I'm very confident that Kenny Ladd will run the Derby distance. I think what a hit will be the hardest to beat. He's been trained to the minute by Bart Cummings. He'll be improved by last week's run at Mooney Valley. He'll appreciate racing at Flemington. But I think Kenny Ladd to win what a hit the next best. Over to you, Bob. Yeah, there's plenty of money too for what a hit. In fact, he's one of the best-backed horses in the race. The best-backed horse in the race, without question, from the time we arrived here this morning, has been Canny Ladd. After an initial flurry of money for Lycra, she's now out at double-figure odds. Canny Ladd has tightened right up to run, and he will run a very, very short price favourite and carry a great deal of public money. What a hit will run second favourite, probably vying for that position with Big Dermot. But they're the ones that the public want. They want Canny Lad first, probably what a hit and Big Dermot second. And of course, Lycra the filly is well and truly in the market as, as, as I speak. But I can only say that there's been a tremendous move all day. Public money, little dollars and cents for Canny Lad, and there'll be a tremendous yellow if he hits the front with 100 to go, Dan. Thanks, Bobby. John Letts is in the box with me. John, you've ridden a Victoria Derby winner. What does it take? Well, it takes a pretty tough horse to win the race, but uh, I, I think Kenny Ladd, uh, as Graham said, uh, he's not bred to win the Derby, but we had that also with Taj Rossi years ago. He wasn't bred to win a Derby either, and he won the Derby pretty easily. But uh, I think Kenny Ladd, all he needs is a little bit of luck, a nice bit of speed on. I think Shane Dye will be able to get him over into a good position. I think he can win the race. I think Big Dermot's going to be a big chance in the race as well. He's uh, 
uh, Roberts Murden's got him trained to the minute, but uh, gee, everything points towards Kenny Ladd, and I think, you know, everybody that's having a pick in the race is uh, sort of going for Kenny Ladd. Well, I'll go for what a hit just to be different, Tim. I, I think, uh, what, what do you like, actually? I don't think we've actually got your tip. Lycra. Lycra, the Phillies. Yeah, you like the Phillies? I like the Phillies, mate. She's the only one in the field, isn't she? She is indeed. She'll do me. She'll right. do me. Good luck. All right, fellas, thank you. All right, we'll have a look at the field uh, very shortly, but first, let's have a look. We've had everybody else's tip, but let's have a look at some familiar and not so familiar faces and their tips for the derby. I've got a soft spot for abandoned war. It's one at Geelong and it's one here, and uh, I think uh, it stands a very good chance. I think St. Jude today. Chimes in. I like Big Dermot. Well, what? Lady Clark, what would you like? Who do you Kenny like in the derby? I think Kenny Ladd. Well, I think Kenny Ladd will just about win. I think his class will pull him through. I'm going for the Philly Lycra. I'm a Kenny Ladd man. Uh, you're going to hear a, a big yell and an American accent <laughs> if St. Jude gets to the wire first. What a hit each way. And uh, I think you'll see a pretty good uh, uh, stay and what a hit today. Yeah, but tip what a hit. Uh, there's a little, there's a tip for you. He might have got into the Prime Minister's ear. We'll take a break and come back with more from the Melbourne Cup Carnival and Derby Day right after this. Back to Flemington, everyone, and Neiman Howell to everyone in Hong Kong. That better be right. The floor manager told me that. I hope I haven't said something dreadful. <laughs> but I think it means how are you to everyone in Hong Kong who's just joined us. There it is, the classic race, the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby for three-year-olds. Set weights over 2,500 metres. It's about a mile and a half. And Dan, what a race we're in for. It'll be an absolute ripper, Tim. Kenny Ladd's at $1.10. Only one horse has completed the big golden slip of Victoria da Derby double, but it's taken 30 years. Kenny Ladd, one ten, St. Jude, eight fifteen, Centro, 13.40. Chimes M, 18. The Guida, 7.80. Lord Revenue, 10. Abandon Moor, 13. What a hit, 5. Shot of Comfort, 41. Over the page to Trisette, $12. Great Sabre, 41. Fire Oak, 17. Big Dermot, second favourite. Direco, 118. Direction, 53. Grooming, 13. Lycra, $6.65. And over the plate, special guest is the wreck outsider at nearly 500 to 1. Peter Donegan is selecting number 10, Trissette, to win the derby. Graham Kelly is sticking with a champion favourite, Kenny Ladd. The runners are in the mounting yard. Let's go down to Peter and Graham. And the class horse leads them out as they go to the stalls now. Dan, Kenny Ladd, Graham, why can he win? Well, I think he's an outstanding three-year-old, and the derby's traditionally won by outstanding three-year-olds. A magnificent performance from third in the Cox Plate last week, and that form stood up well today. I think he's certainly going to be the one to beat. Number two, St. Jude, was a fine effort when sixth in the WS Cox Plate. Races handy up to the lead, but has drawn wide and may have to be used up early. Now the Caulfield Guineas winner, Centro, comes into the race with some claims. He was quite a good last start third in the Herald Vars at Mooney Valley last week. He'll be improved by that run. Number four, Chimes Am. Also wasn't disgraced in the Herald Vars, but the time was very slow. Gary Willits takes the right today, would need to improve. Number five, the Guida Greg Hall. Finished second in the Derby Trial Stakes, but he's wearing bandages today, and I, that's not a good sign, particularly for a three-year-old on this hard track. Six, Lord Revenant. P.D. Johnson is the rider. Flashed home in the Caulfield Guineas, and then uh, plotted in a very fast run, Cox Plate. Distance is the query here, but it's the same with most as we look at Abandoned War number seven. Stan Aiken in the saddle. He won the Derby Trial Stakes at Geelong over 2200 metres in good style he'll have the run of the race from barrier five today certainly one of the outside chances and there is number eight what a hit that we're taking a look at in the famous Bart Cummings colours as the rest of the runners come out what a hit is uh, in the derby specialist stable of course and a good effort in the bars really does shape as a stayer number nine shot of comfort Mark de Montfort in the saddle won very well at Mooney Valley three starts back but his last two runs have been disappointing particularly at Mooney Valley last week when he finished second last my tip at the odds number 10 Trosette failed with the right-handed way of going in Sydney flew home at both Caulfield and Geelong in its last two appearances runs on well I think it'll get the 2500 and I'll rate it an excellent each way chance there's a bit of a tip about for number 13 Fire Oak He's been placed his uh, last three. Uh, well, first of all, we'll uh, take a look at Fire Rug and then we'll come back to Great Sabre, Graham. Uh, he was uh, placed his last three starts, including the champion stakes, and uh, it looks quite well going to the barrier, and uh, I think he's certainly got a good chance. Well, we caught a shot of Great Sabre there. This horse, number 12, has been uh, getting acupuncture treatment all week for an injured tail and back. It is drawn wide here and may have to be used early, but uh, I know the trainer, Gerald Ryan, is confident he'll run a bold race. 14. Number 14, Big Dermot. Uh, couldn't have been more impressive in the Norman Robinson one by six lengths. Robbie Spurton's first derby winner along with Abandoned War and he's probably the danger to Canny Land. The 15, Derrico with Kevin Moses in the saddle. 
finished uh, third at um, Ramwick his last start over 2,000 metres, but he's not up to this class. 16 direction battled on well in the Derby trial to finish less than a length from the winner but uh, once again the step up in class he might find him out. 17 grooming is one to watch he'll drop a long way back in the race but he's had a good grounding wasn't disgraced although only seventh of nine at Mooney Valley last week he'll be coming home. No filly has won the Victoria Derby since Francis Tressidy in 1923 in fact only five have ever won the race. Now Lycra number 18 may be the one to break that mould her mother won the Oaks trial stakes at Geelong and she's very consistent, raced handy last time. She was the New Zealand two-year-old filly of her year and has all the credentials to run a bold race. Number 19 special guest with Simon Marshall in the saddle is one of the four Freedman horses in the race. Second last in the Derby trial at Geelong after setting all the pace. It's very hard to see him winning. Well, the class points to Canny Lad number one showing round about $1.15 on the Victorian tote. Viewers in Hong Kong watching this race and of course viewers around Australia you're seeing there the best three-year-olds in the land as they go to the stalls for the running of the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. Dr Turf, what's the latest? Uh, Pete, well Kenny led obviously the one to beat. The two horses that uh, appealed to me in the mounting yard were number six Lord Revener. He looked very very fit I thought and the one horse who has improved a lot uh, from Cork of was Fire Oak. He looks strong as well. It looked terrific actually but uh, whether she can beat the Colts remains to be seen. Uh, the favourite on top for mine. Dr. Turf there in the uh, mounting yard in the betting ring is Bob Mormel. Bob, what's the latest? Yes, Dan, uh, down here in the betting ring, of course, the money is still flowing thick and fast for Canny Lad. He's tightened up even further and will run a very, very short priced favourite. But they've rallied to Big Dermy. They've put money on Big Dermot and what a hit. Big Dermot now a clear second favourite. Lycra will run about third favourite. But the rest of horses like the Guida and some of the other chances that you've been mentioning today, they will run at very, very generous odds double figures or more but if canny lad the people's horse in this one wins it there will be a tremendous cheer he's the best horse in the race according to the punters weight of money for our friends from hong kong who aren't familiar with betting with bookmakers has decided that canny lad is the favorite from big dermot the second favorite here in the famous flemington betting ring on the rails good luck to you dan this is a biggie thanks bobby peter crackers keenan was down by the start 2,500 metre start of the derby. Crackers, I noticed Kenny Ladd sweating up uh, behind his legs and sort of between his legs. I know he's got more perhaps to sweat up for because he's a colt, but uh, he was uh, sweating up a little bit. Did you notice that? Yeah, but I wouldn't worry about that, Dan, because uh, wrap around uh, sweated up a while ago, but uh, this race brings back great memories for me because four years ago I had a runner in this race and uh, great feeling that came fifth. It just got beaten by Ravino, but uh, oh, Kenny Ladd's top horse, lovely looking horse. He had a lunch time here. I know that's a bit of a problem staying wise. I like Big Dermot. I looked him uh, as he did his prelim, prelim just a while ago. He's fit. Robert Spurton's got him looking a treat. And away he won their last start. Give him a chance. And besides, he's named after a close personal friend of mine. And that goes a lot for me. Well, there's the football over there. Thanks, Crackers. Gay Waterhouse. Darren, you're not riding in the derby, but what do you like? I like the filly Lycra. I think she's a very hardy, hardy filly. And I think that she, she'll run out a strong 2,500. Uh, in the Dalgetty, the last, what about Kingston Rule? Yes, well, I was very surprised and very pleased to pick up the ride on him for today and for the Melbourne Cup. And uh, uh, he, he certainly got a good chance again today also. He's by the great secretariat and you should think he'd be able to run the distance. Well, he's, uh, he's, he's bred in the purple and he's probably the best horse bred in Australia. Um, and I'm certainly glad to uh, throw a leg over him. Thank you, Darren Beedman. Thanks, Kay. Darren Beedman, Gay Waterhouse. John Letts, you've ridden the Derby winner. Your final say? Well, I did go for Kenny Ladd earlier, uh, Dan, but I think he's sweating up a little bit, and a horse called What a Hit caught my eye when he walked out of the yard here in the park coming to polish on him. He looked magnificent. Uh, Kenny Ladd, What a Hit. I think they'll fight it out, uh, but it'll be a great race. Great Sabre going up, the second last horse to be positioned for the Victoria Derby, the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby, Group 1, 2,500 metres. $778,000 in prize money, including $3,000 in trophies. And the last horse to be brought up will be Grooming, one of four horses trained by Lee Friedman, Centro, Trisette, Special Guest and Grooming. Set for the derby, bar one. Grooming is about to go up. Jockey Darren Gauchi. The grooming set, the fields ready to go. The lights on for the derby. Racing. Caught them in a fair line too. St. Jude's going to be used up early. He was one of the best to jump away with direction. They're both going forward. St. Jude's going to lead. Special guest goes up on the outside to be third as they go past the winning post. A lap to go. 
In fourth placing early was Direco, followed by Great Sabre wide with Chime Zam. Over on the inside, Centro's going to get the box seat out of the straight. Look at Kenny Laddin, very wide out. Big Dermot must be eight deep, and there's a lot of horses getting into trouble back in the field. What a hit was one of them. Like we've got a slight check and then Trissette. Kenny Ladd's back to fourth last. Then the Guida grooming and shot of comfort at the rear. Well, special guests ran out in front by four lengths as they went to the 1850. Special guests, four or five lengths clear now. They're working up the second was Fire Rope from Big Derm at third, St. Jude fourth. They were followed by Direction and then Centro inside Chime Zam, Lord Revenue. Followed by Abandoned War, Great Sabre Deep and Lycra behind those from what a hit. And they were followed over on the inside next by Trissette. A length and a half to Reco, followed by Kenny Ladd and then the Guida grooming and last of all shot of comfort. They have about 1,400 metres to go on the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. And special guest in front, pilots the field by two lengths. Fire Oak second, a length and a half to St. Jude, third inside Big Dermot. Here's Chime Zam going forward three deep, a length and a half through the back. They're over on the inside to a centro, then direction, followed by Lord Revenue. He's been able to get off the fence, Lycra inside him. One away, great saver, followed by Abandoned War. What a hit, surging forward for Cassidy. They were followed to a set midfield at the moment, a length and a half through the back in the field to Direco. Then the Guida, Kenny Lads third last, a length and a half to Grooming. And last of all, was shot of comfort, 15 lengths off the lead in the derby. Inside a thousand metres left to go, special guest in front. Challenging him as Fire Oak and Chime Zam around them three deep. A length and a half away, St. Jude, followed by Big Dermot. They were followed by Centro, getting off the fence direction around him. Here's what a hit around the outside, Lycra improving. They were followed by Lord Revenue around the outside. Great saver, Kenny Lad's got a lot of work to do. He's 12 lengths from them. Around the turn in the derby, 500 to go and Fire Oak went to the front. Special guest has gone, followed by Chime Zam, Big Dermot running on. St. Jude needing a run and they were followed by Lycra. Here's Centro down the outside. They go to the 350, Fire Oak in front, Centro went up to claim him, then St. Jude chimes in down the outside, Centro hit the front of the derby, 300 metres to go at Centro in front, Fire Rope sticking back the rail, Fire Rope and Centro, Centro's got his head in front, Fire Rope is kicking back on the inside, the Sydney horse, he's a maiden Fire Rope, what a way to break your maiden status, if he's done it, I think he has maybe Fire Rope, Centro dived at him on the line and above, a great finish on the derby, three lengths away third may have been Lord Revenue or Lycra they were fronted in by Tris Set grooming behind those was abandoned war direction. Big term at Caddy Lad never in it. The Guida, St. Jude, well back to Reco, shot of comfort, what a hit, great saver. And towards the trail was Chime Zam with the early pace maker, special guest. And to be honest, it is very tight. John Letts. Very close, Danny, and I wouldn't like to have a go because as you know, we're way back behind the line here. At, but it looks to me as if the inside horse has won Fire Oak. And what a great ride by B. Hibbert. I've seen him just, you will have a look on the replay, Dan, when they get down here to about the 200 metre mark. Uh, Fire Oak, she seems as if she switched her tail and resented the whip, so he put it away, rode her hands and heels, and then she's got the lead again. She was going to give it away, but good thinking on behalf of that jockey that rode the winner. And uh, But uh, Damien Oliver, what a year it would have capped off for him if he could have won the derby. But this is the advantage of Barrier 1 in a big race, and he's had a lovely run. But you have a look at her here, Dan, when he hits her with the whip, she seems as if she turns on side, half side on and then he put the whip away and she was going to need... Pyrotes won it, Johnny. Pyrotes won it. Yeah, look here, Dan. She did. You'll have it. There he is. He put the whip away on Fire Oak. Straightened her up and she was nearly going to give the race away there and he didn't hit her after that. He showed, showed her the whip but he hasn't hit her. You know, John, in that race, it's the Victoria Derby, the biggest three-year-old race in the whole of the country, the best derby in the Southern Hemisphere. And supposed to 17 be horses at one race, as one horse yep. hadn't. He was a maiden, and that, and that horse won it. Yep. Fire rate. And I think Bob made the, the comment before the race, he had a big bull fed, didn't he? Yeah, well, horse. I said it's helped us there. Uh, I wouldn't mind having it. <laughs> 13, 3 and 6, about a 25 to 1 chance on the Victorian total, Isaiah, would be similar to that price across Australia. And the approximates in Victoria, 16.50 and 3.75, Centro 3.25, Lord Revenue, $2.60. That's what racing's all about, to get a thriller like that. Damien Oliver, how close. Gee, I thought you had a one, two at the 300. He was going for the big double, of course, Centro won the Caulfield Guineas. But there's the close-up on Fire Oak and uh, former New Zealand jockey Brian Hibbert. Peter Donigan's talking to the winning trainer. Uh, in a moment, uh, certainly a trainer we haven't heard much about, but no doubt we're going to hear more of. 
stylish century come from uh, up north from uh, Queensland originally, then Sydney to win the derby last year. And then again, Kenny it's going up north. Ha didn't look happy at all, Kenny Lad, during the run, did he? he? He seemed to get a little bit of interference out of the straight. I mentioned that, John. He settled all right, but even at the 1,200... He was a horse, beaten horse at the 1,200. He was, wasn't he? Yeah, and Jim Cassidy set, set, set the, uh, the other horse alike. What a hit around the outside of the 800. He made ground to the home turn. I see he got a little bit of a, uh, a brush from the inside horse when he was coming out four and five deep, but... Uh, I don't think they're, they're, I don't think Kenny Ladd can stay, and it looked to me as if what a hit was just having trouble getting the journey to. Cassidy took off early with him, but uh, well, as it's turned out, Fireworks won. We don't think of him as being real classy at the minute, but he'll go on. I've got no doubts. I've seen a couple of his runs. He went St Jude to a hit in the Spring Champion, and uh, he does lead in a lot of his races. Quite similar, in fact, to that of Stiley Century. Fireworks, the winner, coming back to scale, winning the Victoria Derby, Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. Prize money of $500,000 in prize money going to the winning connections. Peter, you're talking to the winning trainer. Well, it's bedlam down here, as you can imagine, Dan, and we've got the trainer, Gordon York, with us now. And, uh, well, his first win today. Not a bad yeah, race to win first up. It's pretty hard to place a maiden now, don't you? Well, what about uh, in the race? How was your confidence level? Of course, he's done well. He's, he's just done terrific since he's been. He likes a lot of ground. He's not a brilliant horse. He's a bat. What inspired you to run him in the in the Victoria Derby? Was it the second in the Champion Stakes? <laughs> I already planned this race before we brought him over from New Zealand. You know, big statement, but I trained his half brother and he had guts. He just had raw guts, same as this one. Yeah, well, he, he has got guts because Centro probably had him beaten two or three times up the straight. He only thought that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go and lead him in and enjoy the moment. Peter Donegan down there, and this is the. Um, the angle you'd see if you're inside the race course. Now Centro's clearly in front there, even on the angle, but watch Fire Oak fight back over on the inside. It was a classic finish to a classic race. Look at the desperation of both the jockeys' faces and in their arms as they uh, whip their horses to the post. To look at Fire Oak fight back and uh, he's just put his head in front. It, it probably belies the angle now because they've gone past us. But there was only a whisker in it. It was a short half head that Fire Oak won the Victoria Derby for. We'll take a break and come back with the aftermath of the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. That's the uh, scene in the jockey's room or the, the weighing in area after the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. Rod Johnson, the secretary of the VRC, just chatting there to uh, Pat Lawler. The placings on the derby, I'll just swing around to my right. 13, 3 and 6 with number 18, Lycra, 4. She'd have to be now favourite for the Oaks if she does back up on Thursday. And 15 was number 10, 13, 3 and 6. So it was very much an outsider's trifecta because uh, the actual trifecta itself here in Victoria paid nearly $10,000 for a $1 investment. That's the photo, and um, there's not much in that. That's, uh, that's the, definitely the shortest of short half heads, but look at that. That inch or so is the difference between half a million dollars and about $90,000. Not much. That's what the great game is all about, thoroughbred racing. Fire Oak winning the derby, defeating Centro, the narrowest of margins in one of the most famous races of all, the Victoria Derby. Horses are milling around after the jockeys have unsaddled their mounts in the Derby. And we're actually waiting on correct weight. Now, it's an unusual delay. I don't know why. Um, because the race was run quite a few minutes ago. But Graham Kelly might be able to fix that up for us in just a moment. He'll, he'll be able to talk to the, the winning jockey, Brian Hibbert. In fact, Graham's ready now. The connections of Centro, the second place getter in the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. We want to see the photo finish before correct weight is declared. So we're just waiting for the photo finish to come down and they'll have a look, satisfy themselves most likely that uh, the decision is correct and then we'll have correct weight for the race. Thanks for that, Graham. Uh, quite interesting that, isn't it? In a, in a race like this, um, but then again, I suppose you want to make sure if you're the owner, as I said, there's a difference between half a million and about 100,000. Uh, and that's the difference. Definitely Fire Oak, the winner, has, has won. Despite, actually, Damien Oliver, you have a look at the two jockeys. Damien Oliver is actually sitting further up the horse's neck than uh, Hibbert is 
on, on fire rogue. So it can be quite deceptive, but the inside horse is definitely a lot bigger than Centro. And there was Richard Friedman, one of the uh, co-trainers with uh, Lee Friedman of uh, Centro, just having a look at the print. Correct weight has uh, now been semaphored. Correct weight is there on the derby. 13, 3 and 6. So a bit of controversy there after the Hong Kong Bank Victoria derby. And we'll now have a look at the uh, tote dividends across Australia. An upset result then in the derby. The winner number 13, Fire Oak, $17.25 and $3.50. Second, three Centro, $2.50. Bad luck for WA's Damien Oliver. And third, six Lord Revener, $2.35. The Quinella, $127.80. And hold on to your tickets if you've got the trifecta on 13, three and six, $6,621.60. With their racing to win deals, you can pick up small car tyres from only $59. Oh, what's so whipping a good year for the best tyre deals since Fall Up was a foal. Welcome back to Flemington. And what a gutsy performance that was from Fire Oak over Centro. And what a turn up. And the canny lad found wanting today. They were asking the question, can he stay? And on today's performance, you'd have to say, no, he can't. And quite a few others uh, not very impressive today either. So here we are at Flemington and uh, a few sad faces, a few happy faces. If you're on fire up, you'd be very happy indeed, wouldn't you, Dan? Uh, you would. Uh, you're not uh, trying to say that I was actually on it, Tim, were you? Are you? Were yes. you? No? No, no I shouldn't no, I didn't say think really. so. Not the way I was talking to you this morning. You wouldn't have backed it. But uh, Canny Lad, uh, as I've just said, uh, found wanting today. Yeah, he was. I, I think people are going to look back at it and say the horse couldn't stay, but if you know how good the horse was, he wouldn't have been third last at the at the 1,000 metre point. He would have been up a lot closer. I would suggest there would be some other reason as to why. Maybe he can't stay anyway, but uh, I yeah. still would have thought that he would have finished a lot closer. For him to finish that far back, I think there would be uh, uh, more than just an excuse as him not getting the distance. But uh, he might be stale. He might need a might need a spell, come back a better horse in the, in the autumn. But uh, yes, that's, having, uh, uh, that's to be seen. Having had a bit to do with them myself uh, in the show jumping area, they can have off days. There's no doubt about that. Definitely. Well, we did mention, John Letts actually pointed out before the race, Tim, that uh, the horse was sweating up a little bit. There are little things like that which have a lot to do with it. Horses sweat up sometimes because of their, because they're hot. Sometimes there's other reasons which mm. you know about, but uh, but sometimes we don't know. The horses can't talk, so no, who knows? No, he could be a bit crook. You never know. Exactly. But we'll give him time. Next year when yeah. we're doing the telecast again, he'll probably be running in the McKinnon and be six to four in favour. Exactly. Well, there he, uh, there's the winner, Fire Oak, looking, looking pretty laid back and relaxed about the whole process with his rug on the hong kong bank victoria derby winner for 1990 and they're ready for the presentations down on the track prime minister premier distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen we've just witnessed a magnificent hong kong bank victoria derby and i would say hello to Gordon McQuinney, Chairman of the Royal Hong Kong Jockey Club. We're delighted with the sponsorship by the Hong Kong Bank and we have Mr. Willie Purvis, Chairman of the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation, who has come here with Mrs. Purvis today to present these beautiful trophies. And before introducing him, can I add the club's congratulations to Mr. Harry Millam, the owner, and Mrs. Millam, to Gordon York, the trainer, and Brian Hibbert, the jockey. Well done, and with Fire Oak, we hope to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Willie Purvis. Thank you, Mr. Armitage. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this is the fifth year that Hong Kong Bank of Australia has sponsored the Derby. Hong Kong Bank is in Australia to stay. We are committed to this country and proud of our association with one of its greatest races. On behalf of everyone here today and the millions of viewers watching in Australia and through direct satellite link in Hong Kong, I congratulate those connected with today's magnificent winner, Fire Oak. His owner, Mr. and Mrs. Harry Milne, Mr. Gordon York, the trainer, and Mr. Brian Hibbard, the jockey. 
This trophy represents Hong Kong Bank's alliance with one of the premier events in the world racing calendar. And I present it with great pleasure and with our best, best wishes. There he is, and what does Fyro get? Goes back to the stable, gets a drink of water, a feed, and goes to bed. <laughs> no celebrations for him. We'll take a break and we'll come back with more after this. There's some of the ladies at Flemington and their chapeaus and their very colourful garb here on Derby Day and you can bet on Melbourne Cup Day it'll be even more colourful. So the Derby's been run and won and what a win to Fire Oak over Centro. Both New Zealanders, both Kiwis, we know how tough they can be and it was a great race. We're not finished yet though, the Dalgetty's still to come, Kingston Rule. The Victoria Derby was run just moments ago, let's relive those moments as a maiden won the biggest three-year-old race in the Southern Hemisphere. Hundred metres to go at Centro in front. Fire Oak sticking back the rail. Fire Oak and Centro. Centro's got his head in front. Fire Oak is kicking back on the inside. The Sydney horse is a maiden. Fire Oak. What a way to break your maiden status. If he's done it, I think he has. Maybe Fire Oak Centro dive. Get him on the line and up. Well, there were 18 horses that started in the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby. 17 of them, no doubt, will have stories to tell. And uh, let's have a look at what the losing jockeys had to say about this year's Derby. Peter, good run the race? A very good run, I had no excuses, the other horse, two horses, a little bit better on the day. Yeah, very good run though, thanks Peter. Thanks. Ross, bike run? Yeah, nice run. Um, just battled when I got out late, but um, I think I just got a bit far back and she's pulling a bit, should have held me pace a bit early. Will she go around the Oaks? More than likely now. Good. Harry, Harry? Well, he ran a good race, he was just a little bit immature. He might have got away with it, the ground have been soft. But uh, he's just a bit immature for this hard and fast time that they run on hard tracks, you know. The next time in, he'll be a good horse. Thanks, Harry. Brian, uh, with some Jude, every chance in the run? Had every show. Yeah, he had a nice run. I'd have used him a little bit earlier to get over. But he didn't make much difference. He had a nice run in behind him all the way. He just didn't get the mile and a half. Mm. 2,000 is probably as far as he wants. How was the track? Good. Perfect for him. No problems. Thank you. Shane, can he lead? Just failed to say, and that's it? I don't know whether he failed to stay, like he kept going, he got beat a long way, but he might just be a fresh horse. Like the only bad run he's had to date was at Caulfield and he had to back up, and he's had to back up again today, and he hasn't fired as well. When did you feel he was gone? Oh, at the half mile. Good, thank you. Yeah, quite interesting there, Shane Dyer. As I said before, I don't think it's a matter of the horse not staying, but uh, there might be another reason it might be unfolded in the next couple of days or so, but uh, we'll certainly find out by cup day anyway. We'll take a break, we've got one more to go, the Dalgetty, maybe the Melbourne Cup winner's there.